Let's take a look at some information and charts on Cardano for Brave New Coin. So I'm going to talk about Cardano not because I want to, but because it's something that I haven't talked about in a month and I need things to talk about. So here we are. I don't quite understand everything about Cardano or anything about Cardano for the most part. I haven't for many years. I've said in the past that they are a few years behind Ethereum and it still seems that this is the case a few years later. We can look at things like their roadmap and try to understand what's going on here. Um, it's not for me. I can try to be as objective as possible, look at the things I am informed about, like proof of stake and what to look for there. Currently, 71% of the network is being staked. There are 2,600 pools. Something else you want to pay attention to here is who owns those pools? Is it a geographic distribution? Is it cloud storage? How many of these are exchanges? That sort of thing. You also want to look at the staking rewards and make sure that those make sense based on uh, inflation and that people aren't getting inflated away relative to price. Now, if we look at staking wallets, they continue to increase. So people are obviously liking what they see on that front. And this will probably continue to increase to a point and it will definitely help price much like it has any other proof of stake network, Dash, Decred and others. So that's really the first step of getting people on board. Any proof of stake network is having them trust in the buy and hold through the staking process. So they've got that going for them at the very least. If we look at the staking metrics, according to stakingrewards.com, there's a negative 2.79% adjusted reward per year. That's after inflation. So is that worth it to somebody who would rather participate in the ETH ecosystem on DeFi or pooling on Binance Smart Chain. I don't know, but everything's in the conversation now. So it's unlikely to me that the future crypto people are going to be maxis to any one chain. I don't think there's going to be a large swath of people who are all on board any specific coin anymore. They're just going to go wherever the incentives make the most sense. If we look at transaction counts, undeniably up from essentially zero in, in 2019 to around 62,000. Currently, this is proof of stake, so tons of caveats there as far as what those transaction counts represent and are in regards to the staking rewards as well as any of the pooling transactions that are going on there, it's the staking pools. They do have assets, they do have some DeFi thing that I'm going to talk about, but in the earliest of early stages, I think using the term incubator is generous, but I will use it in this case. We'll call it an incubator. They have stuff brewing. I don't think anything is in its final state or final form. They're still early in the roadmap, and it feels like most of these ADA movements are uh, speculative mania rather than necessarily organic activity. Transaction counts, uh, values, average transaction values are kind of rising with price, basically. Nothing too important to comment on there. If we look at total fees since mid-2020, total fees are rising, which isn't a problem. It's definitely more bullish than bearish. Probably one of the most bullish things for ADA is people willing to spend money for stuff on chain, moving assets, interacting with metadata, whatever it is they may be doing, they're doing in a bigger way than they were in previous years, certainly. And if we compare that to ETH and BTC and look at um, market share, you know, it's not even a blip, right? It's mostly an ETH show right now in regards to fees and DeFi. So if you're ever unsure, right, of who's winning the war, fees is one way to look at it. Now you could say ETH has poor scaling mechanisms and doesn't have proof of stake yet. And that's all fair. But ultimately, people are still willing to pay the price to transact on ETH and not migrate to ADA or Tron or any other proof of stake network. So keep that in mind. <laughs> I think that's a powerful statement. People would rather spend thousands of dollars on ETH transacting than dealing with most other chains. Now, Binance Smart Chain probably is an exception to that rule because we saw a lot of activity migrate from ETH to Binance Smart Chain. But at the, at the same time, BSC had laid the groundwork for farms and pooling and that sort of thing. We don't see that on ADA just yet, at least that I can see anywhere. So if that comes to fruition, 
then ADA will become a bigger competitor to ETH or any other DeFi adjacent product, lending and borrowing, that sort of thing. So not there yet. You know, if you believe in the future of that stuff, maybe ADA is for you. If we look at NVT, NVT uh, has continued to push lower over the past several years, which is bullish. It says that there's more and more on-chain activity relative to market cap. Recently, it's turned up. So it's suggesting that price is getting a little oversold here. Or sorry, overbought here relative to where it's been headed over the past few months. Uh, if we look at active addresses, all-time highs. I mean, it's hard to be bearish on any network that has uh, active addresses like this because it just represents more and more people coming in. Very similar to transaction counts. So it's hard to be bearish on the metrics. It's the fundamentals that are worrisome because they don't, to me, they don't have this community of devs that ETH has. They don't have DeFi products. There's this one Occam with a terrible logo that almost looks like HR Geiger made it. I don't know. It's just bizarre that they would choose that. But um, it's early, I guess, for this stuff. And they have a roadmap. Again, it's just, it's a lot of early, early stage stuff. And here was the IDO, initial DEX offering. I, I don't know exactly what they mean by that, but it looks like it already occurred and it occurred through Ethereum. So I think that's kind of funny as far as the public sale <laughs> of the, uh, the transactions. So, I mean, is ADA the next best thing? Maybe, but keep in mind, supply is high, inflation's high. Uh, based on the numbers I can see, there's going to be tons of people commenting in the video below that, you know, ADA is amazing. How dare I? But here we are. Until I see users flocking to ADA, it's hard to be hyper bullish on something that doesn't even exist yet for the most part. If we look at technicals, this is the 50 and the 200 daily EMA, monthly pivots, VP, VR volume, and RSI. So on RSI, there's a large bearish divergence here, kind of reminiscent of BNB, the coin actually. Very similar picture, had a higher high on a bearish divergence and is pulling back slightly now. Trend metrics still like it. The 200 day moving average is at 90 cents. The S1 monthly pivot is at 90 cents. It's unlikely to break this consolidation area on the first go round. So if this does pull back, it's, it's headed to a dollar or thereabouts before it pulls uh, down any further, most likely. But you can see there's there's really no volume support up here on VPVR. So anything that's risen since January, not just ADA, past all-time highs, really doesn't have any volume support on the way down. So the reversals for these charts can always be swift and relentless because there's not a lot of historic price activity there. Um, versus, you know, the top versus the bottom, you look at all this price activity here, it's unlikely that ADA gets below this zone without an extended consolidation period. Not saying that's where it's headed, but I'm just saying that's the difference here. This is essentially why coffee and accumulation that is still in markup phase and arguably has its first bearish divergence. Here you got higher, high, higher, high, higher, high on RSI and price. And now you're getting higher, higher, high on in price and a lower high in RSI and volume. So definitely a divergence there. Cloud still likes it as far as the trend is concerned. It's above the cloud has been since November and you're getting a bit of a TK cross recross situation. But for me on a chart that looks like this, this is across the board. If, if it looks like this, it feels like I missed the train, right? Either I'm buying the key June or I'm waiting for everything to reset, but it looks a little too overbought uh, for me. Here's the two day BTC chart. And it just continues to scream higher as BTC retraces. So that really helps this uh, pair, obviously. And it really has never been this high other than 2017. Kind of initially when the entire bubble happened with everything. And it's kind of no different here. Sure, they released a bunch of stuff. Sure, a bunch of projects released a bunch of stuff at the end of last year. But also everything exploded uh, in January to now for the most part in altcoin land. So again, in a vacuum, am I buying this? No, you know, can it go higher? Sure, but it's not for me. If we look at this macro inverted head and shoulders that took two years to kind of form and play out, it is above the 2618 um, 
pivot extension at this point. So you're probably looking at a horizontal support here and here. But again, when it moves up this quickly in a day or two, then you have problems reclaiming those levels on the way down. Easy come, easy go, as they say. Uh, lastly, ADA ETH kind of illustrates that although ADA has done well on the USD side of things, it hasn't necessarily outperformed other altcoins like ETH. So it's clearly gained value against ETH in January, losing it in um, March and April, and then gaining again. But it, it, you know, the chart doesn't look like this, right? It's not 700 sats to 4,700 sats in five and a half months, four and a half months. It's more of a 2x plus situation against ETH. So if you think Cardano is an ETH killer, this is definitely a chart to watch. Lastly, I'll just mention the Enzyme.Finance non-custodial portfolio management tool that we use at Techme Capital. You can watch me trade ETH and BTC. You can see performance, AUM, allocation, all the trades I make. You can participate if you want through USD, C, or ETH. We also have a managed DeFi portfolio where you can also see performance, allocation, AUM, and all the trades. All this is done through DEXs. We don't have ADA in any of this stuff and don't plan to yet. Um, but we do have the ability to do so through synthetics. So that's one way to get ADA onto DEXs for ETH is to make synthetic ADA, which tracks the value of ADA, or wrap ADA, which I don't think exists. Uh, so it's likely that synthetics is the route to go there. So that's all for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.